Please be advised that Little Miss Recap contains adult language. The Marriage Ain't for Punks app. This is a comprehensive app for people who are married and people who want to be married. Get on our waiting list because when this finally releases, you need to be first in line. Hi everyone, welcome to Little Miss Recap, the podcast where we put wigs on and scream at each other. <laughs> oh, oh, you're coming at me. You're coming at me, bro. I don't coming understand this. <laughs> right out of the woodwork, coming at me. <laughs> Guys, my name's Amy, I'm here at my bestie Steph, and we're here today to talk about Married at First Sight Season 17, Episode 9, Wigging Out. The episode in which Brennan gets a Julian Assange wig on and gets ripped a new one. And we're here for it. I'm here for it. It was the best. <laughs> and you have a pretty good theory on Brennan and we'll get to it. Uh-huh. I think you're 100% right about your theory. I think so too. So we will get to it. Because we have a mutual friend, guys, who's been in this situation, Mm -hmm. and we Mm kind of think the same thing might be happening. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. Also, when are we going to stop, like, did you see the previews for next week? When are we going to stop Lauren and Orion to be in the same room together? I don't know, because I feel so bad for her. Like, truly, my heart breaks for her. She was so upset this week. I know. And seeing her cry like that and just... It was really hard to watch. Like, I'm really sad for her. Like, they did her fucking dirty. And fuck that guy. I hate him. She has no, in the words of Cody Brown, she is not culpable in this situation. (laughs) She's not. This is all on him. It is. It is. And I'm sick of watching her being fucking gaslit into thinking she did something so horrible. Because I have rewatched that hot tub scene 950 times like everyone else. And Mm -hmm. I still stand by she didn't do anything wrong. Yeah, I agree. So let's talk for two seconds about you watched Bad Surgeon last night. Oh, aim. You texted me at like quarter to 11 and was, you were like, oh, I'm watching this. I'm like, oh, I'll watch it too. Cause I wasn't really tired yet. I turned it on. I was up watching it until 1.30 because I was so obs- I couldn't turn it off. Mm-hmm. And then my mind was so churning over this that I was mm-hmm. awake until almost 4 a.m. <laughs> It was wild. It's insane. It's, it's terrifying on two levels. Number a one, many. I could. It was hard to watch for me with the surgery stuff because I hate that. Ooh. Oh, see, I love it. So that's why this was right up my backdoor alley. <laughs> Second of all, it freaks me out that we do have like this blind trust in surgeons. Mm-hmm. And that was my question, too. Like, was no one asking where these tubes were, like, these tracheas were even coming from? What were they? Who was making them? Where was he getting them? I feel like I need a deep dive on that. Me, too. And I might do that. Was he just literally buying them at the hardware store (laughs) and cutting them and putting them in people? That's what I don't understand. And I say this as somebody that has been in operating rooms with a doctor being a patient and working with the doctor like those items usually come like packaged in you know all the medical crap and like like the dude's not running around with them show up with them in like a brown paper bag from the hardware store like like, were they in a low bag and the guy like pulled them out and just started putting them in people i don't know and how did no one know what they were? I don't understand. Like somebody dropped the ball big time on this. Whether thought, it's like the medical community or whatever, I don't know. I thought the way that they told the story was great. Oh, I did too. It was like excellent. I liked that it was framed, <clears throat> excuse me, like through her point of view. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I thought it was good. I it thought was it was excellent. really good. I, liked I it. thought it was excellent. I loved it. I was up all freaking night. I'm working on like two hours of sleep and I'm not even kidding. (laughs) I could not stop. Like I just, my brain was like in overdrive then because I was so amped up. Yeah. And you know, I just have this like low key fear of medical procedures and this did not help. 
did not help. I know. And I don't – like I love them. So anything gory with like guts in like a medical way, like blood and guts of someone getting murdered, like – not that these people weren't murdered. I don't mean that. They were murdered. But mm-hmm. like brutally murdered, like the staircase. Like mm-hmm. when they kept showing that bloody freaking staircase forever over and over and over again. Like that's the I kind never of saw shit. that. <gasps> I knew that's you would the react kind this of way. shit <laughs> that grosses me out. Although I did yeah. like that one. That was a good show. Um, but I listened to a podcast gross- on it, like a now defunct podcast that yeah. used to be my favorite podcast of all time. It was these two people, they were young and they were obsessed with John Bonet Ramsey. And all they did was talk about John Bonet Ramsey and the staircase. It was oh my so God. random, this podcast. That's awesome. It was like 10 years ago. I don't know what was going on there. That's funny. And it's defunct, and I'm so upset about it. The one guy was H. Allen Scott. That's his name. He's pretty like well known. Let me see if I can find what that podcast was. H. Allen Scott podcast he hosts a podcast now about the golden girls oh i love that it's called out on the lanai um that's amazing but many years ago, oh it was called talking crime Ooh. it was so good i uh, loved it so much in fact i begged him to come back <laughs> really i'm like guys please bring it back yeah he was with this woman i forget her name it was really good it was really good. Anyway, they were hilarious and they would watch like true crime stuff and then recap it. And Do you think they would want to join us to talk about it? No. Oh. Who are we? Who cares? <laughs> you know what I, I mean? Wanna... I'm fucking nobody, but whatever. You know what I want to try to do? I want to try to invite um, Robert Tyne Jr. on to talk oh. about well, when I'm with Mark about. later, I'll ask him to, to <laughs> could give you a call. <laughs> All right, guys. We're here. For, this is serious. We are here for some serious business. Um, this is wigging out. Things have taken a turn here. And we need to talk about it. So we're going to start with your couples because I don't yes. have, like, I have, I have the brunt of the Emily Brennan stuff, obviously. Mm-hmm. But then I hardly have anything for Lauren and well, there is there is nothing, so it's yeah. fine. So we'll start with Becca and Austin. Yeah, let's start there. They're always like a, just a nice sunny place to start. They are. So we open up with Becca laying in bed with stinky Austin, and we learn that it's her birthday. And so when later, is this filmed? When is her birthday? We don't know. I don't know. Good I want to say this was filmed like January, February. Oh, wow. That long ago. So she might be an Aquarius, which I think would explain a lot. Mm, Go on. Okay. Mm -hmm. Or a Pisces. Mm, Oh, she could be a Pisces. She fits both profiles. She could be a Pisces, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So later they're having lunch with her girlfriends. And this is one meeting that actually seemed to be going well. I agree. Um, The friends seem to like – they say that they like him a lot. Um, They're asking all of the good questions, the kids stuff, the sex stuff, all the stuff. Um, Bre- Becca brings up religion again, <laughs> and Austin's all like, ha, ha, ha. like he does that weird, like, <laughs> oh my god, he's like a beaver uh, head laugh. Ha, 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 ha. <laughs> yes, he's butthead. Yes, yes. So, um, Austin admits that he is the slow one in the sex department. So, like I said, Becca brings up religion. And he's all like, huh, huh. and then he, Beck, or Austin leaves the table at one point to go and get drinks, right? And the girlfriends start asking her questions. And I loved this because they're like, okay, now tell us what you really uh-huh. think about not having sex. Uh-huh. Um, and Becca's just like, you know, he's not ready. I am. So we're just, I'm just letting him take the lead. So she's much. saying she's ready. Cause people I think were saying so. Like, yeah. Don't forget about the surgery. And I was yeah. like, I think she's okay now. I, think I do too. I mean, I don't period. think she, she comes out and says like, Oh, I'm ready to bang. Mm-hmm. But like, she does say that she's letting him take the lead. And I mean, not to be, you know, gross, but there are many other things you could do besides oh, yeah. actual, yeah. you know, totally oh, for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, the one friend says, I think we can let the whole Jesus thing go. Like we can deal with it. Right. Mm -hmm. And I thought, you know what? These are really good friends. They are. They really are great friends because if this was me and you were like shacking up with somebody that was like 
uh, praising uh, Jesus opposed to my polit- my religious yeah. views. Yeah. I would probably I don't know how I would feel about it. Yeah, no, these for you. I think they recognize that he's yeah. a good dude for her. Yeah, yeah. it's yeah. really nice. Um Becca I'm just waiting says, for the other shoe to drop. Like, I know she is, too. Oh, same. Mm-hmm. Becca says that he's the first guy she's been with that hasn't wanted to jump into sex right away. And at first she thought maybe he's not attracted to me or that I've done something wrong. And I feel very seen here because what girl doesn't blame themselves? Of course. Every girl does. Yeah. But she thinks she just needs to give him time. She's leaving it up to him. Blah, blah, blah. And it mm-hmm. all, like, it was all nice. Nice stuff. Yeah. So later we're back at the apartment and the friends are arriving. Mm -hmm. His friend shows up with a plant and I love this so much. I love his friend. His friends are great. Her friends are great. And you can always tell like someone by the company they keep. Mm -hmm. Yes. A million Mm -hmm. percent. Yes. Um, So the friend brings a plant and I'm way into this. And if any guys are listening, they should be picking, taking some notes because all the guys are listening to this podcast. Bring some plants. Yes. Our two male listeners. Bring some Mm -hmm. plants. Bring plants. Mm -hmm. They have a beautiful charcuterie that I'm so here for. Becca looks adorable. She loves charcuterie. Like she does these elaborate boards. Like I do. Yeah. She's great. Yeah. I know. Um, And again, she's wearing this amazing top. Somebody needs to tell me her last name so I can find her because I need to know where she's buying her clothes. Somebody help me. Okay. Yeah. So now Austin's sitting outside with the girls and they're asking questions and he's asking them questions, which is nice. Like no one's really like grilling anybody. They're all Mm -mm. getting them all nice. No, I feel like it's an appropriate level of like I need to know your intentions. Yes. Um, he asks them what kind of void he can fill for her. And again, they just say like open communication is really important. And they drill in again that she likes to address things right away. And Mm -hmm. I'm like, yes, me Mm -hmm. too. And we know that he doesn't, but he assures them that all in all he's, um, he's all in. And he, while he is worried about the religious hurdle, he thinks it's something that they can overcome. And he Mm -hmm. seems really positive about it. His friend tells Becca, and I can't remember his name. I'm sorry. I should have written Yeah, I don't have the friend's names written down. Mm -hmm. I'm not good at that. Um, But he tells Mm -hmm. Becca that Austin can be a tough nut to crack sometimes, Mm -hmm. as we're saying. Mm -hmm. And Becca, interestingly enough, says that she feels like he's been really open and doesn't think he's been holding back at all. And that they've built a strong, solid friendship. And it doesn't hurt that they both think each other is cute. I, I'm so oh, worried about them going into zone. the friend zone. I can't even tell you. They She I needs know. to grab his dick and start working on it like right Seriously. now. <laughs> Becca, that is your homework. And I don't mean to sound like she has to sexually assault him, but she's got to make a move. Because this is, this is going he, off that cliff. He's not going to make the move, I don't Mm-mm. think. So I think mm-hmm. she needs to. Um, but the friend is really sweet. He says that, you know, she he's a great guy. She's super lucky. Um, and he brings up that religion has never come up for them in their yeah. friendship or in his yeah. other relationships. So he doesn't think this is a big mm-hmm. deal. I'm kind of wondering if she's making it more than it is. I think she's making it a big deal. I do too. Mm-hmm. Um, if they, I'm just going to put this out there. Mm-hmm. If they end this over religion, I, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I know, dude. It's like bad. that's that's where I will be at because this is ridiculous. Um, but she does say that she is willing and ready to bend on the religion thing, but mm-hmm. she doesn't think that he is. Mm-hmm. And after the party, they're cleaning up. Becca's chomping on some pizza. They're both saying how great it was. They're laughing and joking. Mm-hmm. Um, and she says something so great, and I loved this. She said she told his friend. That it's great that they all of their friends get along and they get along really well because it feels like they have a community behind them. And then it's yeah. kind of like having references for each other. Yes. And I was like, Which that's was a great. really cute uh-huh. way to look at it. I would never uh-huh. have thought anything like that. But that yeah. was really She was cute. chicken references. Yeah, mm-hmm. I love that. Mm-hmm. Um, again, she tells the cameras that she's not going to push the religion thing. Oh, let it like drop, she girl. is. Like, let it go. But she wants to get the intimacy worked out so they both feel connected. Um, 
I she agree. needs to she while they're playing pilot that. wing pilot wing sixty four. She needs to just hop on him and start grinding away. I know. Ooh. Something needs to happen there. I don't know. He's Boobs so in the face. I don't know what she needs to do. I don't know either. But I that feel was, like, that how was stoned it? is he all the time? How, how ha- stoned Amy, do you think he is? I think you're right. Like, I think that has to be it because. <laughs> dude, <laughs> dude. All the time. <laughs> <laughs> love him to death. Whatever. I but too. Like, it's not a slight. You know, no, I'm just saying. I, I think he's stoned too. all the time. Yeah, and I love her too. I wish she would drop the religion thing, though. I'm afraid maybe that she's she needs opening... to get stoned. Maybe, maybe. Yeah, yeah. but, but then I feel like sex is never going to happen. Then, <laughs> uh, yeah, definitely not. Um, but that's all I have for them. They were kind of okay. great this week. I loved mm-hmm, them mm-hmm. again. They're, they're in a good star place. Star couple still. They're still up in my top two. <sighs> we're gonna go over to Lauren and Orion real quick. Let's oh. let's bang this out. Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. <laughs> So Lauren meets with her brother and sister-in-law. Meanwhile, idiot Orion meets with his friend and he tells them, I'm divorced. I was losing romantic interest. Whatever. Mm -hmm. Whatever. I could just fucking slap this guy silly. Like a Three Stooges type situation. (laughs) Yeah, completely. I'm at the point where I don't even want to see or hear him ever again. (laughs) Can we revisit episode two when I said I thought he was yeah let's revisit that amy <laughs> because do you remember what i said you were always grossed out by him uh-huh. mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. okay so he says he told his mom and his sister what happened and they're disappointed fuck, fuck right you off. Mm-hmm. so lauren t- is now we're back to lauren they're cutting back and forth between them and she's like i didn't want a divorce it was his choice but she says emotionally she ran the gambit. Like she felt pain and resentment. And then we go back to him and he says he needs time to heal from his marriage and from how much he liked Lauren because he saw real potential there. Fuck you. Fuck off. Mm-hmm. Lauren's like, this sucks because I always feel like things can work out, but he was so negative. And then her sister-in-law's like, look, at the end of the day, you are a bad bitch. And you're she's gonna right. You're going to travel. You're going to have a great life. Fuck this motherfucker. Mm-hmm. And Lauren kind of smiles and everybody's like, yeah, you're right. And that's it. And I, I never want to see him again. I don't either. Like, I, I never I want see to her. see him again. I want to see him on the top of the trash pile. Yes. That's the only yes. place I want to see him. The only place, laying on yeah. the top of the dumpster with yeah, all the other he garbage. Just, like, uh, and he was He's, on after party, like trying to defend all of this shit. And it's like, He's dude. Such a piece of shit. Yeah. Mm-mm. No, I'm not here for him. He is judgy McJudgy. He <sighs> resents the matriarchy he was raised in. He is misogynistic. Yep. I don't want to hear about it. He is he has the balls to tell a black woman in America. That she doesn't know what it feels like to be oppressed. Okay. Fuck All right. off. Mm-mm. I can't. Done. Okay, please take us to Clam and let's palate cleanse this shit. I love him Clam. So much. Okay, <laughs> Clam. We're on to Clam. I am, okay, I have had a little turn with Clam because I am I already here know for Cam's say. energy. Yes. When he is sitting there and he's just like, I don't know if the food's done. And eh, my dad's dying. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> like, he's just like, he needs a shirt or he needs a hat like the dad in um, The Devil on Trial that Jenny and mm. I covered. The hat just said like, fuck off or I don't give oh. a fuck. That's what Cam, Cam's whole energy is just, I don't give a fuck. He does I not sweat the small think, stuff. And I love it. Yes. I don't think that he doesn't give a fuck, but I think you're right. He doesn't sweat the small stuff. Well, that's I what I mean. He gives a fuck about people. Oh, yeah. I'm clear. <laughs> but he, like, doesn't give a fuck yeah. about the shit that stresses, like, us out. Mm-hmm. The everyday person. Do yeah. you know what I mean? All right. I have so much to talk about this week with these two. Okay. So Claire goes to see Cam at work. And immediately – I'm more in love with him than I've ever been in my entire fucking life. Oh, I'm not in love with him. Oh, Let's back I that am. train up. No, I totally am. Okay. You know, I love bikes and cycling and all of that shit. He is there is somebody... nothing attractive about him to me. No, see, there is to me. It's the he's not dirty thing. enough. He's not mm-hmm. toxic enough. He's not. No, oh, no, I'm. No. He's, he's not carrying around a guitar. <laughs> he is so totally my type, kind of standoffish. <laughs> kind of 
goofy, but I, I can't, whatever. I would be anyway. friends with him 100%. Oh, that's yeah. It. yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so he's super hot and she sees it too, I think. And he's like, he, ha- <laughs> he goes, I have a project to show you. <laughs> <laughs> a project? <laughs> Which is so super hot and adorable. And she oh, seems time to-, to get a ham for Christmas morning, Mr. Spoon. <laughs> <laughs> now he's trying to him. Do you have a shilling for me? <laughs> I fired you last week. But you know, she seems to really enjoy being there. And this is nice. I liked this for those two. Mm-hmm. Um, Do you have a Christmas have a duck? Theory. Sorry, I'll stop <laughs> you in the face. <laughs> I have a theory about Cam. Okay. That I feel like he's... He's waiting for her to start asking real questions. And I don't think she has. See, Hear me I think out, he's please. waiting for her to to make a move sexually or physically. But go on. Well, he is. Mm-hmm. But again, I think he would feel better progressing, as he would say. <laughs> oh, in the so in, cute. In the intimacy department, if she would give him something. And be, hear me out. More than once we have heard him say in the past, well, if you just asked, if you just asked, he's mm-hmm. begging her to ask him things and she's but not. How we saw the producers trolled him a little bit because he's like, you know, <clears throat> she was talking with their friend about, wow, I can't believe his dad's like on his deathbed, blah, blah, blah. And we see her asking about his family. And he's like, oh, they're fine. We're going to have a wedding over in Australia. Yeah. And like, we, we hear nothing about my nothing. dad's dying. You know, we hear nothing and about And she that. drops it and never brings it up again. Well, why would like. you suspect there's something more there? But when you're married to somebody, wouldn't the first thing, one of the first questions I would be asking is, what is your relationship with your parents? Tell me about your mother. Tell me about your father. Tell me about maybe, your siblings. Maybe. Dude, yes, you would. You didn't do that with Timmy because you already knew. Yeah, you but knew I'm him. thinking, but I'm wondering if she did do that. We haven't seen it. Okay. All right, go and on. And he has said multiple times, if she just asked. Okay. Okay. I'm, I'm whatever. So I just feel like he has never really been shown love In the way that she has. Mm -hmm. And I don't think he's ever felt chosen. And this is big. And this is why I think I relate to him in some way. Because I kind of have some of that, you know. Um, I'm just telling you I can see through this facade that he's putting up. And it's a defense mechanism. They were parented in very different ways. Yeah. She exhibits secure attachment all the time. Mm -hmm. And he He doesn't. does not. But what's frustrating. Not securely attached. He's not. But what's frustrating to me in this is that she's a therapist. And while she is half of this marriage, I do think that she needs to understand that he doesn't bring to the table the same emotional intelligence and security that she does. And with her training, she should sort of understand that a little bit and be trying to work that out with him. But we don't see her doing any of that. Yeah, I think she's... I think we're seeing her starting to get there, though. I hope like, so. That's I what think I'm saying. I I'm hope. I'm seeing a change in her because okay. I'm thinking that she's, like, a lot of it must have been so overwhelming True. just with this process and the cameras are there and sure. you don't know what he's saying with the cameras there and blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I also come from the school of thought that, yes, therapists should be insightful, but they also can't often fix their own lives, right? No. We shouldn't expect that. No, no, no. Um, no, no. It's hard and please to see don't. what you're in right do you know what i mean please but don't yes, misunderstand no 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 i agree with you that she should see some red flags here yeah but, but i don't even think that they're red flags more so than they're just obvious flags obvious flags mm-hmm. for her to understand more yeah that i just I think don't we're think seeing she's that. getting but i hope so i think we're getting there yeah so anyway let's go on so later cam comes back to the apartment without food for the party and claire is wigging the fuck out She's super stressed and she just keeps saying to him, you had one job. You have one job, Cameron, one job. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he points out that there's tons of places to order takeout from and they have two hours until their guests arrive. Right. And their guests, there's like three guests. Three people. Like, Like, what? At first I was on her side. I'm like, you're having Mm -hmm. this huge housewarming party and you have no food. 
Right. But then when three people showed up, I'm like, mm-hmm. oh, like you mm-hmm. could get Arby's. This is fine. Exactly. Oh my I mean, god, I, I would never Arby's. get Arby's. Ew. <gasps> what? I like the curly fries, but I don't. I don't what? No. You don't like the fake salty roast beef? No. <sighs> okay. Mm-mm. I think I found a real divide in our friendship. All right. Well, okay. it's over. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> This marriage of 30 years is over. Mm, I could get me an Arby's right now, dude. Mm, All right. So Claire's being kind of bitchy about the food situation, and she's razzing on him pretty hard. And you can see that he's getting kind of defensive with the I'm just the worst husband ever comments because he (laughs) he starts to get really passive aggressive. And I'm just like, I see him. I'm like, Cam, I see you, buddy. I see you, my friend. I'm here for you. You are seen, at least with me. Yeah. But we find out that his friends aren't coming to the party because they had to get ready for a trip. Um, Cam ends up ordering the food because she Mm -hmm. insisted, only to find out that he couldn't choose a delivery time. It's just going to be there in 15 minutes. (laughs) We can see where this is going, right? Yeah, yeah. This ha- this just happened to me like yeah. last weekend with pizza. But go on. And so Cam <laughs> tells the camera that Claire's acting all stressed out about the food, but he thinks it's more than that. And I mm-hmm. agree. Mm-hmm. She's been visited by the ghost mm-hmm. of Christmas, Christmas past. past. <laughs> <laughs> so again, she's freaking out about the food now. It's in the I, oven. I feel like I need to explain something because people might come for me and be like, he's Australian or he's New oh, we Zealand. know this. He's a- I I do the Jacob Marley because of the promo pictures where he was dressed like a Victorian yeah. groom. Okay. Yes. And if you're listening, you should know this. Okay. No I'm just saying for some you. people might be jumping in late. You you're never true. Know. That's okay. true. So Cam now says, listen, the food's already dried out. The oven's warm. Just on 20 minutes ago. And she's like, no, Cameron, it's cold. It's cold. And then she's like, oh, yeah, I do kind of see what you mean. And so, like, what the fuck, bitch? Whatever. She, she admits, just, she, she's just, she, like, she's, she's a type A and she's yeah. stressed. Yeah. I get it. And I see it because I'm I'm part type A, too. I'm part mm-hmm. both of these people. I think mm-hmm. that's why I love them so much. It's okay. really weird. It's kind of like watching myself as okay. two personalities. You're, you're <laughs> like watching your internal battle play out yes. on the screen. Mm-hmm. Yes. So she does apologize and she does admit that she made him order it too early. It was so dumb. But I love Claire. So whatever. She ends up Mm -hmm. teasing him. Cam says, you know, oh, uh, real quick, just to note again, he does say that his friends are not coming to this party. So it's Mm -hmm. only her friends. Mm -hmm. And he says that he's not comfortable being in the room with three therapists. And I'm like, fuck. I don't know that I would be either. Uh, I would Or I would be like, right. No, no, no. Of course, you, like me being me, I would totally love that. But me being in his situation, I can see how mm-hmm. that would be like mm-hmm. major, um, mm-hmm. like worrisome. I would be nervous. Yes. yes. So her friend Amy shows up and I am fucking here for Amy. Well, I'm here she for somebody who's a millennial and, named Amy. Well, right. She, of course, but she shows up with this big pottery vase jar to drink out of to drink out of and i'm like because it's a drink out of anything but a glass party which is i know brilliant. and mm-hmm. that is so fucking brilliant it's i cool. loved it so mm-hmm. much yeah oh i just really love this friend mm-hmm. so the friend comes in they're, they're you know they're sitting in the kitchen and they're joking about being a therapist and she looks at him and she says so how is your relationship with your father like ha ha like Completely teasing, like mm-hmm. pulling the mm-hmm. fake therapist line, and then like, dun, where, dun. where like you and I are always like the doctor feels. So how does that make you feel? That's yes. all she was yes. doing, and yes. he's like, "Well, <laughs> he doesn't know." Like whatever, they find <laughs> out that his father doesn't know that he's getting married at mm-hmm. first sight. That he's mm-hmm. on the show, he knows nothing. 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 And Claire and the friend are both like, "What the fuck?" Mm -hmm. And we all are, and we find out that he's on his deathbed. What would you tell a man on his deathbed? I don't know. I don't know what I would do. I don't know because we don't know. I would tell him that I'm getting married. We don't know what this relationship is like. 
I know. We already know know that he has a very different upbringing. My guess is that this isn't a warm and fuzzy relationship. Mm -hmm. And I think that he fled (laughs) New Zealand for a lot of reasons. Cam is like, and I think there's something in me that is scared of people like this. Cam Mm. is like a deep well of secrets that you'll Mm -hmm. never fully understand. See, and that freaks me out a little bit because I need to completely know somebody. Me too. Yeah. But I do think that he's willing to open up if it's done in the right way. Yeah. And, and I don't think there's anything like, I'm not saying there's anything nefarious about him or I just think he's very deep. Oh, yeah. And there's a lot in there. Oh, definitely. And I don't know how much she's going to be able to unearth. If that makes sense. I know. And he, because he says, like, when she asks him, like, what would your dad think? He's like, I have no idea. <laughs> like, yeah. That's, yeah. that's telling. And it mm-hmm. actually, it kind of makes me, it doesn't kind of, it really makes me sad for him because. What would your dad have said if you told him that you were doing this? My fucking dad would have flipped his shit. Oh, for see, a my second. dad would be like, okay. And then, right. <laughs> So that was my, like, my dad would totally have been the type to be like, you're crazy, blah, blah, blah. But, like, I knew I could have gotten my dad to come around and he would have been super cool. Now, see, that would have been my gram. She would have been like, I don't like it. No, it's Mm -hmm. not right. Mm -hmm. But my dad would be like, all right, let's see how this works out. I can see Mr. B doing that Mm -hmm. for sure. Mm -hmm. Mr. B's chill. Not the Mr. B I grew up with. Mm Mm-hmm reiterating that (laughs) i know i know i know hey everyone stay tuned little miss recap will be right back after these words so the the guys show up now um they seem super cool although they're amazing they're amazing but in the kitchen they're making some jabs at him a little bit and i could see that he's getting a little uncomfortable but he's trying really hard Mm -hmm. Um, the friends ask how it's going. Claire says emotional. Um, they ask Cameron how he handles Claire's big emotions. And he says, yeah, pretty well. Why are we talking about Claire like she's a three-year-old? I know. I know. This is weird. Um, and he says, you know, I think I'm handling them pretty well. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. and he says, he gives her the whole standoffish and then he'll come back later and say he's sorry. And it all works out. Mm-hmm. And the friends are like, well, I'd say that's pretty healthy. <laughs> <laughs> Amy asks him why he wanted to do this. And again, I love Amy. And he said he always wanted to be married. He was single. He didn't have any baggage. He's financially stable. And he just felt like it was the right time for marriage. And there was nothing saying no. And mm-hmm. I love this answer Mm -hmm. i love this answer i agree i agree they ask if he regrets it and he said that he would never do it again Mm -hmm. but he's very happy that he did it this time Mm -hmm. um and then he goes outside with the guys and the guys are asking him how it's going and he's so nervous and i feel i could talk to these guys for six hours me too oh Mm -hmm. me too Mm -hmm. me too i wish i knew who they were because i want to be their friends i know I know. Like, can, how do we get them on the show? I don't know. <laughs> That's a brilliant idea. I'm going to try to figure that out. This is what we need. Yes. We need new therapists. We we don't only need them on our show. We need mm-hmm. them on the show. The show. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. I've mm-hmm. just employed them. So the guys are asking him how it's going. And he's saying, you know, it's been bumpy. But he feels deeper and deeper for her every day, and she's hands down the smartest girl he's ever been lucky enough to be in a relationship with. Which, let me tell you something. My husband says this about me all the time, like he loves how smart I am. I know. In my opinion, that is the best compliment anyone could ever give me. A million percent. And I think because I've never been really complimented on my physicality, like the smart thing is the thing I've always clung to. And when somebody says I'm smart, it is like so heartwarming. I know. I love that he said that about her, especially because she's hot. 
Yes. And he didn't and go to like the she's hot. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's not the first thing he said. I just right. fucking love him. You can't yeah. come for him because I will fight you. Okay. I think he's secretly um, going to butcher the entire cast. No, he's not. But whatever. Shut up. So he says he feels like he's bearing more of the emotional struggle and that he feels like he's sinking. And that's sad mm. because I hate this for him. I don't know when there's going to be emotional intimacy. Oh, I I'm know. slipping into Queen Elizabeth. I, I know. The Queen's coming out. And I love I the do, Queen. I don't know when you're going to slip into emotional intimacy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. So the dudes are like, what happened? And he's just like, the topic of religion came up, and he says that, you know, he's open to having a partner of any religion, but he doesn't want to raise his kids religious. Mm -hmm. And the friends say that they don't think this means it can't work, but it can be daunting, but they advise him to keep exploring the romantic connection and what brought him to this experience. I lean mean, into this it and see where it leads to, you. Right? This yes. is who so you I'm want like, to talk to. Yes, to therapists. Like, yes. I had to write down almost verbatim what they said because it was so perfect. It was like mm-hmm. utter mm-hmm. perfection. Yep. Um, they say that they think – okay. So they – all right. So they kind of wrap it up by saying lean into it, see where it leads you. Um, And then they tell the camera after they separate that they think he's interesting and a lot of fun, but he has a lot, and they stress a lot, of really valid, important feelings and things to say, but he doesn't know how to say them, and they worry that this is going to be an issue for Claire. Bingo. This is exactly what I've been trying to say. He just doesn't have the tools to express himself. Can I tell you something now? Can I tell you something? What? In the relationship that I am currently in, I have all the tools, and my partner came to the relationship with almost none of the tools. It's exhausting work. It's exhausting work. Like Amy? I feel like I feel like I've gotten him there now, where we can Same. have these deep conversations. But I've been married for eighteen years. Correct. It's been eleven days. It's exhausting. But right. It's been so eleven like, days. Give the dude I'm, some. Space. No, no, no. I agree 100%. But what I'm saying is I think the friends see this writing on the wall. Like she mm. is in for this exhaustive process and I hope yeah. she's up for it is kind yeah. of what they're saying. But I also think in a way they kind of have his back a little bit because I yeah. think they see what I see. Mm-hmm. And it. let me tell you something. It's worth it. Yes. Like if you can bring a partner like my husband who just was not ever a great communicator in this way – if you can bring them to the table, it, I mean, it took me a decade probably. Mm-hmm. It's worth it. It's so yeah. worth it. Your totally marriage is. benefits from it incredibly. Like, yeah. But putting that time in is a lot of work. I know. I've done it too. We've, mm-hmm. we've both mm-hmm. done it. Yep. So now we see Claire with Amy. And Claire tells Amy that she likes that Cameron is super smart and educated and that she respects him as a person, and she feels respected from him, by him, but she wonders if it's enough. Mm-hmm. Um, she again goes on to say that he's very anti-religion and thinks that religion will brainwash their kids, but she's had a very different experience. And I'm a little bit confused here because I have not heard him say that he's anti-religion ever. I think he's an atheist. I think he's an atheist, too. He might be... Like agnostic, what is it called? maybe? Yeah, he might be agnostic because it sounds like he has a problem with the organization, organization of religious. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. But I don't but know. I, mean, he, I feel like he might be atheist. And I'm that's okay too. It's okay, but, but he, it's hard when you're going to raise children. It totally is. I know. Mm-hmm. And But the thing is he has said over and over again that he's open to it. And she's just yeah. immediately yeah. saying he's not. So like that's yeah. annoying. Um, Amy tells her to just be open and to try to compromise a little bit. Um, Amy says they both have different, or no, I'm sorry, Claire said they both have different foundational backgrounds and she can't believe that he just brought up the dad stuff now out of nowhere. And this is like a huge red flag and threw her for a loop. Mm -hmm. And I get it. Yeah. I mean, I get it. But again, are you asking questions? Because I don't think she is. I don't know. And he needs – maybe he needs to say to her, like, 
I don't know how to communicate, so you have to ask questions for to get any oh, information right. out of me. And that's what I'm hoping these dudes are going to say to her. Like, Maybe. here's what you need. Like, I'm hoping that one of these therapist friends of hers will give her that advice. Because right. Right. I think they're doing them both a huge disservice by not saying that, you know? Right. Mm -hmm. And I think, too, because his family isn't there... That's even more of a reason for her to be asking more questions. Like he has less questions to ask because he's met the family. They were at the wedding. They've been to lunch. They've done the mm -hmm, thing. You know what mm -hmm, I mean? Mm -hmm. She's had none of that. So she mm -hmm. really should be asking more questions. I'm sorry. Yeah. But I'm, okay. I'm going to fall on the sword for this one. Are you ready for the dumpster? Of no, the I'm not done with these guys. Oh, we still got more. Okay. I'm sorry. It's I know okay. I'm going go on a lot. You're over me. I'm going to try to no, go faster. No, go ahead. Um, but after the party, they're talking. This is important. She brings up the stuff about the dad and that she's taken aback. And he's all just like, okay. Claire's like, <laughs> okay, question mark. And Cam says, well, you didn't ask. Oh, yeah. This is and exactly he said you didn't there. ask about the... He said that last episode. I, he's been saying it. So like, yeah, that's but what like, I'm saying. Fuck, like, this is where I have a problem. I want to say know. fuck you, but I'm pulling don't it back. Don't say it. This is where I have a problem. Like, just because you don't know how to share anything doesn't mean she needs to be a mind reader. I know. And know that she has to pull these questions out of you all the time. I know that. But again, it's a lot I, of work on her. It is. But I think he was, I don't think he had a normal upbringing. I don't. I, I don't a, think so either. But like, stop with the digs of you didn't ask. Like, I know. how it's, would she oh, know to ask? You know um, what I mean? Like, because she's a therapist and she should be asked. She should know. But whatever. Yeah, but no. Amy, mm -hmm. I agree with, I agree. I see both sides here. I'm, yeah. I'm completely yeah. agreeing with you. I do see both sides. I just wish somebody was helping him along because he needs help that he's not getting. The experts aren't giving it to oh, him. Oh, I know what could have helped him. Therapy? Like 10 years ago, maybe? Now you're just being mean. <laughs> Go to therapy, dude. All no, right. it's true. These, This is a pet peeve of mine and people are going to come for me and I know you are. But you can't go through the world emotionally unavailable and expect other people to do the emotional heavy lifting for you and you won't go to therapy and do it yourself. Um, I'm completely agreeing with you. You know that I agree with that sentiment. However... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When you come from – I'm going way too deep here. I, nobody wants to hear this. No, I don't do even compare think, this to your situation because you've not, been in therapy for like 20 all. years. I'm not okay. at all. all what right. I'm saying is I think when you come from a family that doesn't communicate, that isn't loving, that doesn't show emotion, if you're not taught that therapy is a normal thing – I don't think that's something that you just inherently know, Amy. And I'm going to tell you. I understand you. that. And I'm not saying that he's at fault for moving through the world this way. But he does bear a little bit of responsibility when he expects other people to compensate oh, for it and know it. Completely. You know what I mean? That's where and, I'm saying. Like, uh, no. If he wants to just be untherapized and communicate like this his entire life, great. Fine. Have at it. Yep. But you can't. Then be like a dick to other people because right. they're not recognizing it and reacting in the right way. Right. And I agree with you. I'm just saying that I think this is where the experts are failing these two because we need yeah. Pastor Cal and Dr. Pepper in there. Well, Pastor Cal's ass came two. out. Didn't you see that? I did. <laughs> but we need them talking these two through these things because I yes. truly believe if somebody says – somebody neutral says to Cameron – you will be so much better off if you do X, Y, Z, if mm -hmm. you say blah, blah, blah. I think he would do it. I right. truly and it, do. And she needs to say to Cameron, when Claire asks you, what does your family think about this process? Yeah. That is a window or an opportunity for you to say something like, well, it's complicated. And maybe mm -hmm. when we know each other a little better, we can talk about it. Instead of saying, everything's fine. We're going to have I a know. wedding in New Zealand. I How know. would Claire know? I know. That, you right. know what I mean? I like, know. I just, I think, I think he's just wildly insecure. I think he comes from a not great background. And I think he's a little bit intimidated that she has a great family. And I think he's just trying to find his place there and he wants somebody to help him. Truly, that's what I see. I see like a wounded boy. 
I do too. But I also see somebody who's incredibly resilient and mm-hmm. strong right. and has in every other aspect of his life taken control, risen up, overcome things, has succeeded. Do you know what I mean? Like you need to do that do. in this arena now, dude. He totally does. And I wish – I might regret saying this. Oh, no. I don't want to cut it. <laughs> but – this is where I think there's a huge divide in therapy for men and women. Oh, no. I agree 100%. So, but again, men, that's what I'm stigmatized saying. stigmatized like, for men. 100%. It's stigmatized. And we're ex- you're kind of saying, though, that you're expecting him to not know that. Like, I'm to- expecting him to not expect her. I know. To overcome for his shortcomings. I know. Like, maybe he doesn't know it's a shortcoming. Maybe to your point, maybe he doesn't even recognize. I don't think he does. That it's a shortcoming. But I'm sure don't. people have told him in his life that he doesn't tell people things. I know. Do you know what I mean? I don't know, I'm guys. Gonna, come at, at us. Fast. So he tells the camera, listen, I feel like I'm stuck between a rock and a hard place. He really, really likes her, but she shows him no expression of feelings towards him. And he doesn't know how to build on that. And I mm-hmm. feel that. I feel yeah. I see both sides here. I see yeah. a little bit more Cam side, but I see Claire side too. Like I'm not coming at her in any way. I love these two. And I really yeah. want this to work out. I just feel like, so at the end when she's like, oh, when they're talking about the dad and he's like, she says to him, I feel like you don't have the mental capacity to deal with this right now. And I'm just, and I'm going to respect that. And I'm just like, dude, I get what you're doing. But at the same time, like you're missing a huge fucking opportunity here to start talking to him. Yeah. And mental capacity is a little harsh. Yeah. Yeah. Like this maybe, was, uh, oh, I see you don't have the emotional bandwidth. You know what I mean? Like, right. and you I'm know, what, gonna, you're tired or whatever. Yeah. But to say you don't have the mental capacity and, is like I you're understand. not capable of it. Like I'm not going to shame her for the words that she used. Yeah. I knew what she was getting at. I just mm-hmm. didn't understand why she was doing it because, again, you're a trained therapist. This was your mm-hmm. fucking opportunity. You're yeah. with him alone to sit down and say, okay, this is concerning. Let's talk yeah. about this. Tell me. like, what, Do you what think are you she's holding? not into him? Yeah, I do. Mm. I do. That okay. is exactly where I was going to finish with this. Mm. So you wrapped it up. That's exactly what I think. Because she has all the tools. She has all the knowledge. She has all the support from her friends that are all therapists like she is. She knows these things, Amy. She's not acting on them, but she is kind of doing a little thing where I think she's kind of tricking us to see that she's like giving him space and trying to be supportive and blah, blah, blah. When I think she's really just pushing him out the door a little bit. Mm-hmm, because mm-hmm. she just doesn't want to say the thing that she doesn't want to say. That's my opinion. I okay. could be wrong. I mean, Come they can go me. either way at this point. I know. Same. Let's I see. completely agree. But I'm sorry I spoke way too long today. I'm going to show No, up. no, no. That's fine. All right. Let's scoot over to Brandon and Emily. Oh, this guy. So they're moving I in have together. A with all of these people. I know. I know. They're moving in together. And in the meantime, Emily's meeting up with Sophie, her good friend. Mm -hmm. Sophie, her good friend. So Emily says, I like Brennan because we match and our values are aligned. And she says, he was so into her, but then something changed. Mm -hmm. And she says he has real issues with being on camera. And Sophie's like, dude, you signed up for this. You knew you were going to be filmed. Yep. Emily says she's starting to get frustrated, and Sophie tells him, look, just be patient, give him some more space, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. Now on moving day, Emily has a ton of stuff. But, like, I don't think it's inappropriate amounts of things. I don't think it was a ton Mm -hmm. of stuff at all. She has a – they have to live in this apartment. You need essentials. What the fuck? Do you notice what her essentials consist of, though? There's a lot of alcohol alcohol in there. (laughs) I know. So Brennan says – I don't know what to do here because I set a goal for myself that I'll never be divorced. So I need to figure this out. Cut to cut to a week from now. Brennan wants to get divorced. Guarantee yeah. it. Mm-hmm. So Brennan says, Brennan tells Emily that he takes very long showers because he needs to do a lot of processing. 
Am I missing this? Is processing code for masturbating? I don't know. That's what I was going to ask like, you. I was urban dictionarying this. Uh, no. Does I, he mean processing like just thinking? I don't know. I don't okay. know. Because it was like not clear and it was kind of said as a joke, but then it kind of kept going. I have no idea. Okay, I truly any, have if, no idea. If anybody under the age of 30 is listening, please tell us if processing is code for something because I, I missed it i don't know okay i don't so, know all i know is i live with three men and i don't want to know what the fuck goes on in are my they showers. processing in the shower i don't want to know <laughs> <laughs> so back to our friends only tell amy because yes. i don't know i'm teasing so they go wig shopping and they're acting like goofballs like they're having fun they're pl- they are role playing fun. yes mm-hmm. Emily feels like the wigs are going to loosen up the vibe. And he says, I'm glad Pastor Cal forced me to move in. And Emily's like, yeah, I'm glad you eventually came around. And he says, I'm glad that you trusted me to figure this out. No. No. Mm -mm. So now Brennan's trying to do a surfer voice. Like, dude, I'm catching some waves. No, stop it. Stop it. And he puts on like, he wants to think it's a Kurt Cobain wig so bad. I know. It is not. Get that man's name out of your mind, <laughs> out of your world. I never want to hear you say Kurt Cobain or go anywhere near him in your mind. He has a Julian Assange wig on. That's where we're putting him. Okay. Okay. So M has on a red wig and she's pretending to be Veronica, a British chick. Okay. I'm Veronica. So, Hello. I'm, I'm Veronica. Veronica. So their friends get there, okay? And they start talking about the stuff that Emily brought to move in. Mm -hmm. She says she did it all by herself, even with a bad wrist. Steph? Yeah. I mean, she was clearly stirring up some shit with that comment. He made her move all the stuff. He made her move all the stuff. Yeah. (sighs) That motherfucker. But I'm just saying, like, that was her way of, like, throwing that dig to make sure that he knew oh, yeah. she was pissed. And oh, I would yeah. be too. Fuck you, mother. Fuck him. Please. So now his Gosh. bros. I don't even want to call him. I'm sorry. I don't even want to call him baby Vlad anymore. No. Because no. we're no, he's full Vlad on Putin now. Zelensky. Forget yeah. it. Yes. So yes. his bro his bro show. I will never call him Putin again, guys. I'm sorry, but I had to say it. It's I there. Know. Okay. His bros all show up now and they're like, dude. And all of these friends are either getting trashed or they all have vocal fry or both. Like it's. I think it's all. It's all like a night above. at the club. Yep. It's all of the above. Mm-hmm. The two friends that are there of Emily's are like getting trashed. They're doing shots. They're loaded. They decide this is a great time to take Brennan outside and talk to him. Now. They're like, tell us what made you do the thing. Now, Brennan says to them, I was going on a lot of dates and I didn't have a romantic partner to have in my life. And I felt that that was missing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I found, I thought it was time. It's a decent answer. It was a decent answer. Mm -hmm. The friend is like, she's like a a backbone and I really haven't heard you like be the backbone for her. This woman is slurring. It's hilarious. Okay. It's hilarious. So now um, Brennan says, well, I can do that for her 100%. I can be her backbone. Friend says, you say you're here for her, like, but did you help her move upstairs? And Brennan says something that is so fucking telling. God. He says, this was the worst thing I've if ever heard. This in my life. was real life, I would have. And the friend is like, what? This. Okay, we need to reenact this now. Are you okay. ready? <clears throat> I'm Brennan, I guess. Yeah, I'm gonna be friend. You be Brennan. Okay, you're okay. just you're just trying to follow what's okay. happening here. Okay, <laughs> trying to defend yourself, trying to follow. So friends, like this is real life. Like you guys got married, and I'm worried. And I'm upset that she deserves the world, and I'm not sure you're really giving it to her. You guys are just like coming at me. Like, what answer are you looking for? What did, What do you want to hear? Uh- I feel like you don't help her. Like, you didn't pull everything out of the oven. Um. Well, I got the stuff out of the oven, the churros and the mini whatever the hells. And, and then uh, we see footage of it. him pulling so, the things out of the yeah. oven. 
Uh, I, I took it out of the oven. I just didn't put it on the platters. Like, I'm at a loss. Why are you coming at but, me? Like, but, like, you didn't plate everything. It seems like you're coming at me, like, out of nowhere. And I'm, try- but, I'm not trying I, to understand. I'm trying to understand. Why are you attacking me? But I feel like you're getting the details wrong. I feel like you're looking for details. Like, you're, like, hung up on details. Oh, I feel like I've done a decent job of opening up. I'm not perfect, but I'm trying. Should I just quit now? Like, is that what you're saying? I'm like, I should just I'm quit? Like, I'm, like, making an example. This is well, – let me just say, aside. Okay, I'm breaking the fourth wall a second. I've been this person. Okay, let's go. Maybe you have. I've yeah, been with I, you when you I, were this I, person. I have talked to oh, people yeah. like this. Oh, okay. yeah. And I love it. It's one of my I'm favorite like, things I, about you. I'm making an example, like making an example of like her plating everything and like you're just standing there. Well, I took it all out of the oven. I'm at a loss. Look, like, look, look. Like wait, at the wait, end no, of the no, day, no, no, like. No, 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 no. Wait, so you didn't get to see all the setup. You you didn't see, so like that doesn't apply, right? I'm trying to understand why you're attacking me. Why are you attacking me? You're coming at me like out of the woodwork. You don't even know me. So like stuff goes on in the background, obviously. No, don't sit here and act like you understand. I don't well, know like, you. At the end you, of the so. day, like why are you married? Um, I wanted a partner. I was dating a lot and I didn't want to be alone anymore. Like, don't sit here and act like you're trying to understand. Like, you're coming at me. You're what are you coming at me, for? dude? You're, you're coming, coming at, at me. me. Okay. Thank you. Scene. He was like just literally trying to follow what she was saying. And I know. She was, she's all over the map. She's like, you don't, you're not doing this. And he's like, okay, give me a specific example. And like, she can't give him one. I know. And then she's changing what she's saying. Like, I appreciated her effort. And I, I did too. I was like, girl, God, I wish you were sober for this because I know. you're saying that you struck the right tone. Yep. You're doing the right thing. Yep. You're just like, but you're tripping over your own fucking feet. Yep. Yeah. It sucked. So, because like then, the intention was there. The intention was there and it was correct. I know. So then they she basically it. says to him, like, I've heard you've made it miserable to film. Like, you don't like filming. And he's like, is that what she told you? Mm-hmm. Is that what Emily told you? Mm-hmm. And I'm, I'm like, miserable Jesus to Christ, film, somebody man? go put Emily, like, in the what? tub in a, a hurricane shelter. And he's like, what? I'm miserable to film? Is that what she said? Is that what she said? Yeah. Fuck off. And Calm she's like, down. Anger, anger much? Jesus. Mm-hmm. So basically, she's like, you know, calling him out for having his guard up and blah, blah, blah. And he's like, look, what do you think? I should quit now? I should quit now? I'm still here. I'm still here. Like these are, and he's doing this in the wig. And that just is it's like the best. chef's kiss. The fact that they're all in the wigs mm-hmm, doing this mm-hmm, is, and mm-hmm. she, even at one point she like is talking to him and she's like fixing the wig. And I'm like, just take it off. <laughs> <laughs> so later Brennan tells Emily like, your friends attacked me and it yeah. was wild. And Emily's like, they just care about me, but it wasn't fair that they treated you like that. No, it was fair. He deserved it. They just need to make it. more sense. Yeah. They have so you know what it is? All of these girls are just so fucking immature. They're all and trashed. they're too drunk all the time. Yeah, they're all trashed at this like, party. I really and I, I have been there. I was enabled I was yes. able to imbue that character because I have been that person. Yes. But I no, get it. No, just That's, no. This is not how you do it. So Brennan tells him, Brennan tells her, or she apologizes, and he says, you have nothing to apologize for. Mm -hmm. Then he tells the camera, I wanted no drama, and I didn't get that. And Emily was very supportive, and I give her a ton of credit. And then, I don't know why I have this note. Emily is meeting with his friends and she, oh, so she's meeting with his friends inside Mm -hmm. while all that was going down, Mm -hmm. and she was like, it sort of hit me this week that I don't know if he's ready for this. Yeah. And his friends and are all like don't... Pikachu face. Like, yeah. Like, uh-huh. Uh-huh. Mm, Deer in the headlights. Mm-hmm. Nobody knows what to say. So that's really it. Like her friends read him for fucking filth and I was here for it. I yeah, just same. wish they did it better. Me too. Oh, yeah. They could have really, really done a good job here. Yeah. But they blew they it. They I don't know, Amy. <sighs> I have some thoughts. Okay. So... Oh, tell everybody your theory about Brennan. So here's the theory. Mm-hmm. I think it's a good one. Is it possible 
that because we do know that he was recently in a relationship. Mm -hmm. We know this. I think what happened, and this is totally just coming out of my ass, Mm -hmm. my back door. (laughs) This is for my back door friends. Um, No, teasing. But I think, is it possible that he still kind of hung up on this person He jumped into this on a whim. Maybe somebody dared him. I don't know. Whatever the Mm -hmm, reason. Who mm -hmm. cares? It doesn't matter. What I think happened is I think he was really into her at the wedding. I think he was really into her when they got to the the honeymoon. Mm -hmm. I think the ex person found out that he got married at first sight. And I think this person either emailed him or texted him or something Mm -hmm. that got a worm in his ear or whatever. That through him, I don't know if she just commented on it or if she's like, I want you back, but Mm -hmm. it's clear that something happened. And you and I both have a friend that have been in this situation before Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. where you're all into one thing, but then something over here is like, oh, hey, remember me? And you're just like, And the switch just flips. It's -hmm. like squirrel. And that's exactly what happened. Like we're watching it happen. Mm -hmm. And- because if you – so he was not weird about filming at the wedding. He was not weird about filming really anywhere until the this shit started. Yeah. And I think it's because, like, did he make some kind of promise to this person that he's not going to go through with mm. it? So now he's, like, trying hard not to be on camera because he doesn't want this other person to see him, like – Something doing thing. Happened. Something's going on. And I think you're correct. I think it is the interference in some way yep. by a third party. Yep. A hundred percent. There is an external something going on here. It totally mm-hmm. is. Mm-hmm. It has to be. I'm this certain of it. This reminds me of, I want to say we've seen this happen before. Oh, we did. We did with Chris and Paige yes. in Atlanta with that yes. motherfucker where she was like pregnant. Yep. And yeah. Yep. Yeah. So we've seen this before. Seen and mm-hmm. Yeah, the switch really did just flip. The switch happens, and he's pretending there's no switch, mm-hmm. but then it's like, oh, mm-hmm. I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is, because he can't tell the truth. That's why when Pastor mm. Cal was grilling him, and he was like backed up, he wasn't doing the shoulder shimmy, but he was doing the, no, we're not doing that. We're not doing that. He was just being mean. Yeah, and next week's previews do not look well for him. No. He his with Dr. Pia. I know. His defense is anger yeah and that's a huge problem yep you're exactly right you're exactly i was trying to look up because i thought we had this instance on love is blind i thought this happened with chris and johnny remember they were together at the party yeah and when they got to the reunion he he had met somebody and he just fucked off yeah but i don't i think he had met somebody i don't think it was somebody from his past no Mm -hmm. with chris and Paige, it was somebody from his past yeah yeah i I agree with you i agree with you i really think that's what it is Mm -hmm. i truly do just because, like I said, we've seen this happen in other seasons. We've seen this happen in real life. Nothing else really explains it, but the, like you said, the interference of someone else. And I'm, I'm mm-hmm. going to stand on that until yeah, I'm yeah. on the rise. Until I think you're right. I, I think, think you're right. I think it's it a good theory. Mm-hmm. So next time on the couples talk, and Cam says, "I'm head over heels." Aww. Okay. I really think he is. Brennan. Fights with Dr. Pia. This, I can't freaking wait to see this scene. She's like, I'm talking to Emily. I'm talking to Emily. Yeah. She can yeah. speak for herself. Yep. Whoa. And Dick Bag, he is, oh, I, I hate him. I hate him too. Austin needs time to work through things that could tear them apart. I know. What is that? I don't know. I don't understand what that is. Is it I the wrote- religion? Might be. Or the illness. I don't know. I don't know either. I wrote, Brennan Loki rages out. And then Lauren is forced to meet with Orion again. And we don't know why. I am at the point where I feel like they're just abusing her now. (laughs) Like, stop. Leave her. Let her alone. I am begging Kinetic Content, who produces the show. I am begging you. To do a middle-aged version of this. Please. Get divorces. Get people in their 40s, early 50s. Let's yes. get real here. Please. This, I'm so tired. I'm so over reality shows. Try, because 
socially, society has shifted their views on marriage. Mm -hmm. 20-year-olds are not running out wanting to get married anymore. I know. And so, like, I don't know, like, what are their ages here? They're all in their their early 30s. Early 30s, yeah. So here's something I will say, though. Maths, um, I don't know if it's you. It was Australia. Um, The ones, I watched two seasons, but one season that I watched did have, like, older divorcee um, people that had children, mm-hmm, like the mm-hmm, Australian mm-hmm. version does that. Like they, it's anybody. Yes. Which is kind of great. We a hundred percent need to do, do better here. Mm-hmm. We cannot take 20 year olds and do this experiment. No, it doesn't not, work. It's not going to work if the experts aren't going to be involved like they used to be. It's just it, not. And we're seeing that. I mean, I just feel like, again, what we know about marriage, how, the views of marriage have changed. How people don't feel that you are stuck in bad marriages anymore. Mm-hmm. Or there's not the resilience or the grit to stay in a marriage that doesn't mm-hmm. work for you, right? And in, in many in many ways, that's a great thing. Right. But like, these guys are just not going to put in the work. They're just not. They don't have mm-hmm. to. They don't have to. Exactly. <sighs> I know. Okay. Oh my gosh. A middle-aged version of this show. Middle-aged maths. Women, you know, approaching perimenopause, they need to just lay in bed and watch their murder shows. The the husband's out like, I don't know, playing World of Warcraft. They're not talking to each other. Everything's great. Yep. Seriously. Seriously. All joking aside, adults with real life experience would just make the show so much richer. So much richer. And don't, Mm -hmm. like, don't get me wrong, though. I love this show. I, love I like the show, show too, but I feel like it's changing. And maybe it's as I'm getting older, my patience for that is less. I don't know. That could be it. I don't I know, think that, but like, why do, are we doing this with 20-year-olds? I do think that our aging could probably be a part of it. I mean, we started watching maybe. this a long ass time ago. A long time but, ago. But, you know, I mean, the experts aren't nearly as involved. We've talked about this every week. I mean, until mm-hmm. they start... Going back to the original concept of the show, mm-hmm, I mm-hmm, don't. Mm-hmm. I, I agree with you. We can't just throw these people together. Yeah, with, it's with just, no support or with love minimal. Is blind. Support. Love is blind. Same thing. Same, oh, like, look yes. at. There's a reason that the Golden Bachelor was so successful. Yeah, yeah. you know what I mean. Like, learn from yeah. that. Yeah, I don't know. It's just weird. It is weird. All right, girl. Um, guys, if you haven't already, jump in our backdoor friends. Check out our paid content. We offer couple different tiers we're doing some 90 day stuff sister wives some cult stuff on there and also we have ladies of a certain age tier where you're gonna hear a lot of gen x and ladies of a certain age talk yeah and amy and i are contemplating doing a virgin river rewatch yeah it's not going over well in the group girl Mm -mm, mm -mm. fuck you jenny (laughs) my sister jenny got in there and tanked it i feel like she's influencing people Mm -mm. i love it so much it was such a big sister move um it, it really was. Like, she has no skin in this no. game, and she just jumps no. in there to Get sabotage me. Yes, mm-hmm. Jenny. Fuck off, Jenny. <laughs> <laughs> we do have, guys, if you're listening to this on Thursday, yep. we have the Virgin River Christmas special coming out this Saturday, so stay tuned. Can't wait. That'll be fun and exciting. All right, my friend. Um, leave us a five-star review, even if you say something terrible about us. Like, we're too mean and too snarky. Still leave the five stars. We'll take it was the greatest my, that's <laughs> definitely my favorite review this so far <laughs> and also while you're leaving a review you should share the pod with a friend share, that's a po- great share idea. the pod with one of your backdoor friends that's a good idea invite mm-hmm. your backdoor friends to the backdoor mm-hmm. friends there you go there you the go. more the we merrier got we got it all right my friend i'll talk to you soon and thanks everybody for listening we'll see you soon love Bye. your bones